Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Photoshop editing video. For this shot, let's apply a darker look with way stronger sunrise color tones. So that means I just want to make the sky a lot warmer. And let's see how we can adjust the foreground as well. So let's go. By the way, if you want to follow along, you can find the download link for this raw file in the description of the video. So first off, I do want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will give me more base saturation, which is exactly what I want for this image. Then in the basic tab, I do want to adjust the white balance, making the whole scene a lot warmer by bringing up the temperature. Let's bring it up quite a bit, just to restore those lovely warm color tones in the sky. And also, you can see this will get us a neutral looking foreground without the blue color cast. And I'm not touching the tint since I don't think that's needed in this case. For the next step, I do want to bring down the exposure, which will help us fix the overexposed areas, especially in the sky. So let's bring it down a notch, just like that. Still, looking at this program, you can see there is some overexposure, but I don't believe I can get rid of all the overexposure in those bright spots up there. So that's okay. Let's also bring down the highlights. Just like that. I don't want to bring them down all the way because that looks super strange. Then to add some more contrast, I'm going to drop the shadows very, very carefully. Just like that. And maybe let's raise the blacks for a softer look. Perfect. Now that's it for the exposure adjustments for the moment. Next up, I do want to add some texture, giving this shot a sharper look. And while we're down here, let's also add some clarity, which helps as well. Then for the vibrance, we can bring it up a bit, giving the whole scene a lot more color. Just like that. Lovely. Then that's it for the basic adjustments. Now let's do some local adjustments. And I want to start with a linear gradient for the sky. To be more precise, I only want to change the top part of the sky like this. And here, let's bring down the exposure, making the top part darker. Uh, this looks pretty good. I guess we could also increase the clarity up here, which will give the clouds some more structure. Just like that. Perfect. Next up, I do want to apply some glow. So let's use a radial gradient and create a very tiny one right here above the bright spot. And in here, I'm going to increase the blacks. I am also going to drop the dehaze. I'm not going to drop it too much because this is very, very strong. I also want to drop the clarity, making this spot a little softer. Just like that. And let's introduce some colors by bringing up the temperature. And also I want to use this box right here to add a specific color tone here. Let's bring up the saturation. All right, that's looking good. Maybe we need to adjust the positioning a bit, but I think that's fine for now. Then I also do want to work on the foreground. Again, I'm using a radial gradient because the shape fits those rocks in the foreground pretty good. I'm just placing it like this so those rocks are covered. In here, let's lightly bump up the exposure and the shadows just to give this spot some more brightness. And then let's add texture and clarity. Nice. And finally, I do want to adjust the sky a little more using a few more radial gradients. So I do want to apply one on this side, creating some kind of light bleed effect. So light comes over the mountain edge in the back. For that, I'm going to simply use some negative dehaze and some negative clarity, making this spot softer again. Let's do something similar on the left side. Again, I'm using a radial gradient like this and I could also just use increased blacks and again let's drop the dehaze so that works pretty good and at this point we are pretty much done with the local adjustments 
Next up, let's do some color grading. I do want to start in the color mixer tab by just bringing down the blue saturation because it's a little too much in my opinion. Oh, that is looking more natural. Let's continue doing the split toning in the color grading tab. And of course for the highlights, I'm going with the warm color tone, which will help with the sunrise colors. That is looking pretty good. Let's do the same on the mid-tones. Just going with a warm orange tone. And I do think, however, I need to bring down the saturation in this case. Just like that. For the shadows, I do want to apply a cold color tone with a very, very low saturation. Perfect. Finally, in the calibration tab, I do want to bring down the blue primary hue just a little bit and let's also bump up the saturation. Now that is looking good, let's compare to before real quick. You can see sky is looking much more interesting and the foreground does have a much more natural color tone as well. So let's continue by sharpening this image, drop the radius, increase the detail, apply some masking and increase the sharpening. Perfect. And with those adjustments done, it's time to open this image up in Photoshop. First off, I'd like to enhance the glow on the sky a bit more. Therefore, let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, grab the brush tool by pressing B, and let's drop the brush opacity to not make this effect too strong, and use a warm, use a slightly warm color tone like this. And then with the brush tool, I'm simply going to carefully paint in some more glow over the mountains. That's looking good. If we want to have a more heavy glow effect, we can just create another new layer, go with the hard light blending mode this time, and again use the brush tool to paint in some more heavy glow. I personally like to do this on those very, very bright spots right there where the overexposure is happening. So that's it for the glow. Then I also want to apply a little bit of dodging. Again, I am using a new layer and for the dodging, I'd like to use the TK panel plugin to create luminosity masks. Here I'm looking for something to target the foreground specifically. Something like this for the midtones works pretty good. So let's add this luminosity mask as a layer mask on our layer and make sure to change the blending mode to overlay. Then I'm changing the foreground color to white and maybe increase the brush opacity. And then I'm just carefully brushing over the foreground. All right, in this case, this might be a bit too strong. So let's bring down the opacity of this dodging layer. But that is looking really, really good. At this point, I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin. So I'm going to use the TK panel plugin to merge those two layers in one single layer. Here I'm just selecting merge visible. And on this new layer, I can now add some Nick collection effects. Uh, but first, let us remove my girlfriend from this image. Here I'm just using the spot healing brush, which should do its job pretty good. Perfect. Maybe we can clean up some other things as well. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's enchant this image with the Nick Collection plugin. I do have a very certain look in mind for that. I'm going to use the polarization effect first and I'm going to turn up the strength quite a bit. I know this is a very heavy effect, but I kind of like how it looks on this shot. So let's go with something like this. Then I do want to add another filter. This time I'm using the skylight filter for some richer sunset colors, but maybe I will use a lower strength here. Okay, and to further enhance this, I'm going to add one more filter. And this time I use the brilliance warmth effect for some extra warmth. Just like that. Okay, that's it. One final thing I'd like to do is to just scale up the mountains a little bit. For that, as usual, I'm going to use the Perspective Warp tool. With this tool, I'm just creating a grid and I do want to make the mountain in the very center a little bigger. So I'm creating the grid around this mountain. 
This should be fine. Let's hit the warp button and then let's try to scale this one up just a little bit. That is looking very, very good to me. So at this point, I'd like to stop the editing. I hope this video was interesting and helpful. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.